Question 236 of leak code, lowest common ancestor of a binary tree. So given a binary tree, find the lowest common ancestor of two given nodes in the tree. So according to the definition of a lowest common ancestor on Wikipedia, the lowest common ancestor is defined between two nodes, P and Q, as the lowest node in T that has both P and Q as descendants, where we allow a node to be a descendant of itself. So what does that mean? So in the first example, we have P, which is equal to 5, which is this point and q which is equal to 1 which is here and the lowest common ancestor of both 5 and 1 is its parent and that is 3 so it's the first parent of both p and q second example we have 5 and 4 as p and q so the lowest common ancestor of that is the first parent of both 5 and 4 which is 3 so let's discuss the solution for this so we will be utilizing recursion in this solution and the basis of it is is we want to traverse to the lowest depths so in this example we want to traverse to say six to begin with so left then right then root so post order traversal and we want to check to see whether the value we're on is equal to either p or q and based on that information we can return up certain values if we start at three we need to traverse down all the way to the left side and this is going to be pointing to null right so what this is going to do is if the root is equal to null which in this case it is we return up null. We check the right side, we return up null. And then we can do a check here. We can check to see whether P and Q is present. Is P and Q available? If it is, what we do is we just return this value. So we'll return root. But in this case, it's not. So what do we return up? We return null up to five. And then we go down the right side and then down to seven. Yeah, seven is a leaf node, so it's pointing to null. So the null is gonna be returned from the left side and null is also going to be returned from the right. Then we check at seven, is P and Q present? No, it's not, okay? So is seven equal to five or one? No, so we return null to two from the left side. Then we recurse down the right side. We get to four, again, pointing to null. So we return null from both sides. Then we check is four equal to P or Q? No, it's not. So we can return null back up to two as well. At two, we check, is P and Q present? No, neither of them are. So we check if two is equal to P or Q, it isn't. So we return up to five, null. Now at five, we make a check, is P and Q present? No, it's not. So we check to see whether the root is equal to P or Q. Five is equal to P. This is where we can return up the value of five. Then at three, at the root, we're gonna to have to traverse down the right side. So we get to zero, we check, that's pointing to null, so they both return null back up. Zero is not equal to P or Q, and P and Q is not present. So we return null to one. We check the right side, eight is pointing to null because it's a leaf node, so these are returning null. Eight is not equal to P or Q, so we return null to one. Now we can check one, is P and Q present? No, it's not. So at one, we check to see whether that's equal to P or Q. It is. So here we can return one. And then at three, we check to see whether P and Q is present. Yes, they both are. So we return the root. So we return this value. So that's the basic understanding of this question. In terms of time complexity, it's going to be O of N, where we traverse through the entire tree using a stack data structure. And then space is also going to be O of N because we are storing each value within the stack. Okay, so let's write this out. So we're gonna have a function called DFS. We're gonna have node as a parameter and we're going to call DFS passing in root. So we need to start off our recursive call with base cases. So we discussed those in the explanation. So if node is equal to null, so if we reach the bottom, we can return null back up the tree. If node is equal to P or node is equal to Q, we can return that node just to signal to the parent that we have found one of the nodes. Then we traverse down the left side of the tree. So node.left, then the right side of the tree. And then we do the check. So if left and right are available, so if both have been found, return the current node that is the parent. So at this point, we're at three and we've traversed the entire tree. Five has returned up a value 
right has returned up a value that's not equal to null. So we can return that node, which is three. Now, if left is undefined, we return right. And if right is undefined, we return left. And this can be simplified to return left or right. Finally, we need to return this DFS call and then let's give this a run. It's been accepted, let's submit it. And there you have it.